Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, Principal Architect at Dell, and one of the leads on the Crowbar Project. The purpose of this video is to show you how to build a Crowbar ISO. We're going to build the Crowbar Hadoop variant uh, on CentOS. And uh, we're going to use, in this case, a uh, Rackspace cloud server. Uh, this is a very fast and easy way to build a, a cloud server. Uh, I'll show you one or two tips that can speed that process for you if you do it multiple times. Um, and then we also uh, typically take the output of this this build and cache it on the crowbar.zehicle.com site. Uh, it has open source, only open source components. It's the same as exactly what I'm going to show you. Um, and it does not convey any warranty or support beyond uh, our normal listserv. Uh, so it's a truly open source uh, build. So let me take you through this. Uh, what we're going to do is use the Rackspace Cloud uh, I'm taking. I'm building a cloud server. I could just build a fresh one. Um, in this case, I'm starting with one that I already have, but I can just add a server here. Uh, I'm going to pick Ubuntu 10.10. Select that. Name my server. Something. Uh, we've been. I've been successfully using a 5.12, 20 gig server for quite a while, and it works great. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, I'm not going to complete that process. I've already built one, uh, like taking the cake out of the oven on a cooking show. And that server I'm already logged into is right here. And the benefit of this server over the one that I was about to request is that I already have the I already have the um, sledgehammer uh, pieces, which is a prereq, and I have both the CentOS and the Ubuntu. ISO is checked out. So very convenient to have those in um, already cached so I don't have to download them. They're four gigs. Um, so any time I can save by not having to redownload is good time. Uh, to build the ISO, once I have the, the system checked out, I can follow these instructions. Uh, I do need to be a super user, so let's go ahead and do that. Excellent. Now I'm in as a super user and I want to uh, app get and update my image. Uh, this image probably already has most of this since it's one of the ones I use to try and speed things up. Um, I added RPM into this list. RPM is one of the added requirements if you are going to be building um, the Hadoop CentOS version. Okay, so any, any RHEL or CentOS version is going to require the RPM. Uh, library from AppGet. So this is this is set. Although if something wasn't happy, let's try an AppGet update just to make sure everything is good. It's always a useful thing to do. So that should be fine. But going back to our next step, here we're going to actually get we're going to clone the Crowbar ISOs. Oh, the crowbar code repository. The crowbar um, root is just the build instructions. All the real code comes from the submodules. So let's do this. I'm going to switch into that uh, repo. And so I need to get the submodules. Excellent. So what I've just done is I've pulled out the base crowbar. Since we want to build the Hadoop pieces, we actually want to check out the Hadoop branch. So let me do that instead. So now I've switched to the Hadoop branch. I need to repeat my submodule init, and it's going to bring in those extra submodules. All right, so I just completed this git submodule init. And now I have to do a git submodule update. It's going to come through and, and pull all the pieces. and you'll be able to just use HTTP, pull down the open source uh, Hadoop repos without any security. So this is all set. We're, we've uh, completed our, sub, uh, our update. Now when we want to do our build crowbar, we're going to come in and um, we're going to do it with the CentOS 5.7 extension. Uh, this will fail. Whoops. That shouldn't have failed like that. Oh, it didn't. It pulled out the the .sh. I 
we'll fix that in the instructions. So this is telling you, hey, we couldn't find the RPM for uh, crowbar, so we're missing pieces, the specifically the build cache. Uh, so we need to fix that up. So uh, to do this, the simplest thing is going to be to um, put the sledgehammer TFTP boot in the right place, and same with the ISOs. So. So I've created the build cache. Let's see if these are in this in these instructions. So I'm going to create my build uh, cache. I'm going to also I need to put my sledgehammer pieces in the right places. So good. And then I'm going to move uh, sledgehammer to that directory. There is, and I have an event. There's an advanced build video that shows how you can actually set uh, these locations, so you don't have to move them around. Uh, if you do a lot of builds, I recommend that. Sorry, not doing this right. Okay, so that's moved over. Still have to move the ISO, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the build tell me that. So you can see that the build. Um, all right. <laughs> of course, I have to type better. So one of the things that uh, Victor specifically has worked very hard with the build is to make it um, give you a lot of feedback when things are going wrong. Um, so in this case, I didn't get all my prerequisites in the build, and it's going to tell me about that. So these are in the ins in the instructions here. So when I f when uh, part of that failed, there we go. When uh, I got that fail notice, I was missing components. Just the build very happily tells me uh, that I'm missing those, and I can add them back in. Uh, in this case, it's very useful for you to see uh, things missing, not working quite right, so that um, you know how to fix them. You see the the process. Uh, in this case, I'm trying to get Crowbar Sledgehammer, so uh, I have to change the name of this directory from Sledgehammer to Crowbar Sledgehammer. See if that addresses this one. All right, so we advanced past that. It found Sledgehammer, and now it's asking for the CentOS ISO. So uh, it's it can't find it because uh, we have not um, put it where we where it's expecting it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tell it where to find it so you can see how this process works. Uh, and this is documented in the same page where we are going to tell it where the ISO library is. So what we can do is we can do an export the ISO library and we're going to tell it to look in the home directory. So in just root. There we go. So now, next time I do the build, it should find the ISO that it's looking for. So we've worked very hard to make this build process flexible. Uh, we're constantly tuning it and improving it uh, and trying to, to create um, a better experience, more robust experience. Um, we welcome feedback, uh, requests, and uh, changes. It's part of the Crowbar code repository. As a matter of fact, it's the primary thing in the code repository, uh, the crowbar base. All right, this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to pause and come back to you when it has completed. So after a long time, uh, 
the uh, ISO is built. Uh, if I do a LS, I managed to hold down the shift key. You'll see this is the ISO that we built. Uh, actually, I'm going to upload this ISO. It's going to become the Hadoop uh, open source release ISO. So you've gotten to watch it get built. Uh, our very first open source Hadoop artifact. Um, it's bringing a tear to my eye. So uh, the thing to note in this is that it took a very long time because I had to bring in all the build dependencies. Uh, I'm going to move back up a level. And if I look at the dot files, there's a dot crowbar build cache. This dot go crowbar build cache is is gold uh, for you from savings time perspective. This is where it caches all of the bits and pieces that it pulls down on that first build that take forever to accumulate and will cost you some bandwidth charges. That's why it's nice to do it out on the cloud so that you don't have to wait while you pull it across your pokey slow cable modem uh, or your uh, corporate, uh, your overwhelmed corporate internet connections. What you want to do is save this build cache. Uh, I'll actually SCP it server to server as I go to maintain it so I don't have to re-download it. Uh, if there's anything new, of course, that'll get added. Um, we store one internally. Uh, we talk about that in our in the advanced build local uh, video that I have. Uh, and I highly recommend you look at that. But if you want to save time, you will preserve a copy of this crowbar build cache somewhere close to the place where you do the builds. Uh, with that, I will bid you adieu and happy building.